Thank you to Dassault Systems very much for our beautiful lunch today. We have the um, same drill as before. If you wouldn't mind, please, to continue to enjoy your lunch as quietly as possible so that we can, um, your neighbors can enjoy the presentation. We have a short announcement, and then we will introduce our keynote speaker. As soon as lunch is over, we're going to have you um, visit our exhibits downstairs for about 15, 20 minutes so we can clear the room, and then we will reconvene here for the afternoon sessions. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Ron Welch. I'm the Dean of Engineering at the Citadel. And since we're a small school, I also get the opportunity to be the Associate Dean for everything else that goes on in the school. So I get the privilege of serving with many of your Associate Deans on other committees. And one of the committees is the Undergraduate Experience Committee that we meet at ASEE. One of the things that's come up over the last two years is the discussion on the value of engineering education. Some of us have departments. We put all of our people in those departments. Some of us are hiring individuals to make change. So this survey is our effort to try to gain insight on the value of engineering education. Uh, we're going to ask, we're going to have ASEE staff at the doors as you depart this session. And so if after you've eaten and drank, uh, you can't go until you turn, turn, in, and turn in your sheet, OK? Uh, we've done this before, trying to send it out by electronic, but we know a lot of them get killed so quickly that we really, really need your input on this. So I do appreciate it. Anybody that's a dean that doesn't have a survey, please raise your hand and I'll get you one so that you can leave the room after this session. Thank you. Okay. Um, I, I'm going to introduce the luncheon uh, speaker, uh, Xavier Fouget, uh, Senior Director of Global Academic Programs for Dassault Systems. Uh, he is an industrial engineer, former science attache in Vienna. Uh, Xavier Fouget joined Dassault Systems in 1990. He developed new innovation processes for various automotive manufacturers in Germany and Korea. He created the corporate organization in, ch in change of global academia. He designed cutting edge leading initiatives for secondary and vocational education in the United States, Malaysia, Canada, and France, where he introduced a STEM program for 11,500 middle and high school students. He initiated uh, project life cycle management competency centers in India, China, Brazil, Mexico, Colombia, South Africa, Vietnam, and Argentina. He manages research funded by the US and European agencies on virtual labs, collaborative engineering, 3D and MOOCs, uh, problem-based learning and textbook virtualization. He helps <coughs> institutions and governments in transferring into education educational programs, emerging industry practices, such as social innovation, precision agriculture, the Internet of Things, or systems engineering. A founding member of IFES and GEDC, uh, the steering committee of CEFI, he provides lectures and seminars on innovation management in various engineering and business schools. He was awarded the Peter the First Medal of the Association for Engineering Education of Russia. So we're pleased to have Xavier Fouget as our luncheon speaker. Good afternoon. It's the 10th time I, the 11th time I enjoy interrupting your lunch. Who was, who was in Puerto Rico 10 years ago attending that same conference, I see about six, seven hands. That's why I like this assembly here. It's rotating a lot. You see uh, many new faces. Some disappear for going back to the joy of teaching. Some disappear for becoming university presidents. It's a good preparation place to become a university president. 
And I don't know if I will contribute to that brilliant career, but I will at least share some hopefully interesting ideas about what is happening when I observe the global engineering education panorama. Solving problems or differential equations, I think it's not an exclusive or, but uh, I always ask myself, uh, how, what is the percentage of new graduates freshly hired who after one year of professional life solve differential equations? In fact, all of them solve problems. And that's the subject I would like to approach by looking at a transition that is happening worldwide from course-centric learning to project-centric learning. My preferred study of the moment about engineering education is TUEE that is conducted by ASEE. If you are interested in this study, I think the, the PI is here, Ash Ashok Agarwal is somewhere, maybe not in the room, but at the conference. He's leading this study. And when you see um, the traditional exercise of uh, making the inventory of what kind of competences are expected by employers, you see categories that are not subject to courses. How do you teach flexible and capability to adapt to rapid changes? How do you teach that? No one, no professor has that on his business card. And so on. All this list, or at least three, three quarters of this list, is made of things that are not subject to disciplinary learning. It's made of things that you have no time to teach, you have no professors to teach. No one is teaching that. You can look at it from a theoretical point of view, but this is all, these are all things you learn by experiencing them. So how to experience them better than through project-centric learning in which you will learn those things by practicing them without being told that you are learning them just by, by being naturally encouraged to practice them. So the flip is this one. It's a global movement from course-centric to project-centric, from courses pushing the project to projects pulling the courses from uh, capstone projects, projects as a capstone, to projects as a foundation. That means earlier. Methods have been growing over time, and uh, there are two here that I mentioned which I am watching because I think they are credible. CDIO, I assume everyone knows CDIO. Let, can, can I do a survey? Just raise your hand if you know CDIO. Oh, I still need to explain. CDIO, conceive, design, implement, operate. A learning methodology, especially adapted for engineering. And the, the next logo is the logo of the uh, UNESCO Center for Problem-Based Learning because problem-based learning is the other interesting method to look at when you try to put, to put some science on this notion of project-centric learning. They have things in common. They address the soft skills at the same time as they address the disciplinary skills, the sciences, the hard skills, at the same time. This for deans, I think you hear often the curriculum is packed. Here I'm talking about things that do not require additional time. I'm talking about overlaying learning 
activities. They have in common to start with the early phase, the creative phase of innovation, the conceive, the ideation, the production of competitive disruptions, and they have in common to finish with the implementation and the operation, with the creation of something physical. They have in common to be industry realistic because they are looking for challenges that come from the real life, the socio-economical context. They are contextualized, the word that we heard at least 10 times this morning. And they are social. It's a collective exercise. It's an activity for students that they practice in groups. I don't want to, you to, to read these definitions I took from Wikipedia and simplified, but there are a few words that I need to take out of these definitions to really materialize how profound the changes are that these methods bring into the way you organize uh, teaching. It's about having students experiencing. When you sit in front of a lecturer, you do not experience because you don't do anything where you take notes. You experience the art of taking notes. That's a useful skill, but you don't need only that. It trains the students to hunt for knowledge. If you look at the daily life of an engineer, we spend our time solving problems by using knowledge that we do not have. We have to look for the knowledge we need to solve the problems we have. And I mean, I think in, in, in the position of a dean, you do the same. You don't have the information you need. You don't have the knowledge you need to systematically provide an answer instantly. If that would be the case, your, your working days would be shorter. And it's a very profound change in, change in the organization of a program. That's the challenge on you. And when you look at CDIO, there are similar concepts that I want to emphasize. It's about real world subjects. You have to bring the reality of the external world into the curriculum. You have to put the students in context. And it's gaining ground. You're, that's probably the Nobel Prize for Engineering Education. It's the National Academy Gordon Prize. It was given last year to WPI for their revolutionary implementation of PBL. So, uh, I think the Academy, and maybe there are members here who wanted to encourage this movement. And I think it's just the beginning. In other countries, this is a global movement. Last year in November, the World Bank announced with the government of India a new program for modernizing technical education in this country. And uh, when you look at the announcement, one of the purposes of that program is the one written here, developing problem solving skills. In my own country, the French equivalent of the EBIT has published in April its new guidelines. Just orientation, it's not, nothing is mandatory here. And here also, they have been announcing that in audits they would look at signs of the growing application of problem-based learning. It's difficult to implement PBL or project-based learning. It's difficult for the dean because it's an organizational challenge. If you imagine that there are institutions on this planet where all the courses are planned as the consequence of the projects. 
that's an organizational challenge. So that's why I'm not, I will never be preaching that the 100% the application is the good one because it may be the good one, but if it's impossible to apply, why looking at that? You can move the cursor in the direction that I am preaching here, but I do not expect anyone to do the 100% curriculum this way. I think it's just technically very, very challenging. But nothing prevents to move the cursor. Other challenges are here. Cross-disciplinary cultures. We heard that word also, interdisciplinary, cross-disciplinary. It's a permanent challenge. We could have a statistic over those conferences over a year about the number of times this word is pronounced and see the curve growing. Transitioning faculty from the I teach attitude to the they learn attitude. Most of uh, faculty like me, they like to be the sage on stage. And here is a, a movement that is asking them to be the helping guy, working around, helping project teams, solving the problems they have in solving their problems. And this is a difficult role, supervising projects. If you want to do that seriously, you have to take time, give time to the students. How? And this is, a, this is an activity that has never been automated. You use standard tools to facilitate, you use mailing if you are not together with, with the students. You use tools. But you have to intervene sometimes very early in a project group. They are not with you necessarily at the time they, they are stuck. You may be overseeing 10, 20, 50 projects at the same time. How do you divide your time for the teams? You have to balance the work among team members. You know these situations where the, there are one or two students in a team of five or ten who are really the workers. The others, they encourage them. You need to encourage peer assistance as a supervisor. Because, because you cannot assist every time, you have to, want to, to encourage and find mechanisms by which they will help each other. To learn, to solve problems, make micro problems that can just block their progress. And you have to evaluate the results of individuals while they have produced something as a group. How to attribute the results. The industry cycle of solving problem goes through these simple three steps. You have to find inspiration, you have to innovate, and to create a solution to a problem. When we try to transpose this into education, into project-based learning, creation is the thing we do traditionally because at that time we, we look at the solution already. And this ends up in, in all the courses we know. Courses in which you tell students, uh, produce this technical object or this technical system. What we do more and more, but not yet enough, are the two other things, innovate and inspire. But when you look at a student, a student group involved in a project, you just gave them the assignment. You go out of the room. What do they do first? They go on internet. They, they, they start their research about the problem you have given them or suggested. Could we not help them by doing with them exactly what we do in industry, a structured approach of those, this ocean of information that is internet? approach, tools, ways of extracting the right information. 
We cannot just transpose these three things into education. We need two more things. I think you will agree with that. You, they have to learn and you have to evaluate them. With that, we have five categories of activities that can be automated. And in my thought process, when I, when I tried to do this, this translation, I, I, I ended up realizing, remembering the core business of the company that is working, that I am working for. It's a company that does solutions for engineers, tools for doing that cycle on the top. These tools. With, so the traditional CAD, CAM, etc., things you know. But bundled in a certain way, integrated in a certain manner, so that they constitute a platform, a real platform, something on the cloud, something accessible from anywhere. It's social, it integrates the social practices that students are used to on the social networks. And it includes also the traditional tools that you are familiar with. Here are just a few types of, a few employers of these techniques. In fact, there are 170,000 companies that should be on this chart. This is just a sampling to show you that these tech kind of techniques, they are employed in very diverse industries, not just the traditional electromechanical industries. Why, why is Procter & Gamble using these tools? Because they need to anticipate the behavior of baby diapers when they are wet. So these issues you find in all industries. So what we did is this. We took those five types of activities that characterize project-based learning, and we customized this platform I was just showing in a manner that presents workspaces in those five categories. Inspiration is about presenting uh, different sources on the internet that relate to the problem you are looking at, to the statement you have been giving, to trigger the curiosity of uh, students so that they do not just jump on a solution but explore similar problems. This tool you can customize so that they arrive in an environment that is already opening a window on this problem's area. And then they can add their own in such a window. There are more tools in this working environment to analyze what the web is saying. This, when we did this, we were inspired by L'Oreal, the cosmetic company, because they were using one of the tools that are embedded in this workspace to observe chatting 15 years, 15 year old girls in Australia talking about uh, shampoo that would glow in the dark. And then they started thinking, should we do such a product? And they decided not to do it. So sometimes you need, you need these tools to decide to stop with in full knowledge. But anyway, here you, you provide your students with the environment you want them to explore, to start from, and to collect inspiration. When they will come into the innovation activity, it's the traditional brainstorming. When you brainstorm, your enemy is the cleaning staff who removes your post-its from the wall in the evening. Because then, good ideas that you may not have selected are forgotten. 
If you do that electronically using this type of tool, you would then be able, one, to discuss collectively in a dispersed manner. You don't need to be together. You would rank the ideas the same way you rank posts on a, on a social network. And this will be persistent. An idea you do not keep, you do not promote this idea, you will still be able to come back and re-explore that if you realize it was not such a bad one. And so on. These are tools that automate the process of producing a solution concept. At this stage, it's a concept. You are not drawing anything. You may sketch things, but you express ideas. Now you come into the creation process. Now you find the traditional tools for designing, for manufacturing preparation, for prototyping, for project management. These are not just tools to design things. It's also tools to manage the project. And these are all then coming through that same single window. And of course, in this cycle of three steps, you have to insert learning and evaluation. Learning means that the knowledge they will have to hunt for will be partly available in this workspace. You will have put some seeds, your own course, something on the internet, a MOOC, any type of existing teaching material relevant to the subject, as you suspect it will be in the course of that project. You will put formal learning information here. You know that in the middle of this course, they will have to solve differential equations of a certain type because you have well engineered the subject of the, of the problem. You have selected it well. And then you say, yes, at this date, there will be a course about that type of differential equations. Or they can enroll in any recommended course that you would put here. Or they will find some content that they feel interesting and share that with their peers. Or someone asked a question in their group. Someone else who is not physically together or someone in another group will answer this question and will receive ratings for the answer. So this will bring the, the, the mechanisms, the social network the mechanisms that they are used to into their university activity. And it will help you, the evaluation. Assume you, you, you mentor 10, 10 groups like that. You cannot be always with them. The system tells you, this group is not working. Something is, there is a problem there. Nothing is happening. They are not storing any idea. They are not publishing any question. It's a signal for intervening without being daily with them. Or, in that five people's group, there is only four who produce content. What happens with the fifth? Or, they have produced a nice design of an electromechanical system to uh, to uh, look at uh, cows in herds, for instance, from GPS stuff, that's their design. They have, that, they have decided this. And still nothing comes, no design comes. Or, a design comes, but who has worked? You can attribute each of them at the microscopic content level. Who has done that? You can attribute that to a person, to a user. The traditional difficulty of 
rating an individual when the outcome is produced by a group. Let's imagine you organize your course as project-based learning and ask your students to develop an innovative product idea related to connected objects. The project goal is to imagine a concept and build a prototype using open source electronic components and 3D printing. To achieve this, geographically dispersed students with various academic backgrounds have to collaborate to experience industrial real-life issues. Students do not need to have theoretical and technical knowledge at the beginning of this project. The goal is to learn by doing as the project progresses. Presented as widgets on a dashboard, the 3D Experience platform enables you to create an intuitive environment in which students work as a team and share ideas and content such as documentation and digital mockups. Creating a dashboard is easy. It is based on standard components that can be customized for specific learning outcomes. Once dashboards are created, they instantly can be shared with students and updated. All you need is internet access to stay connected with students for project reports and intervention no matter the location. Here is a dashboard that you can use with your students. It consists of four tabs, Inspire, Learn, Innovate, and Create. The Inspire tab is automatically updated with information like articles, videos, and social media posts in which anonymous people present similar, previously developed projects. Students can use this state-of-the-art tab as a source of inspiration to catalyze smart ideas and stimulate their creativity. The Learn tab gathers the required scientific background information. It also shows how the 3D modeling app works. To develop students' knowledge, you can create wikis or e-learning units and share documents, videos, or 3D objects. Students can access such educational resources depending on their academic knowledge and needs and collaborate using their skills to manage the project. The 3D Experience platform is a cloud solution which provides students with mobile access to learning resources. This enables them to work independently, ask and answer questions, or assess whether peers' help is needed anytime, anyplace. In this context, educators act as coaches, supporting students as the project progresses. Debates among stakeholders are essential in innovation processes. They are promoted throughout the Innovate tab. Here, all team members express, discuss, define, or abandon ideas. To boost collaboration, this tab includes an ideation tool which mimics post-it brainstorming and displays the life cycle of the team's collaborative brain power. decomposition and project planning are the backbone of engineering management. Within project spaces, students can manage their projects and you can supervise the progress in real time, identify at a glance any delays, their causes, and intervene if necessary. Various 3D modeling apps are found in the Create tab. They enrich the project with digital mockups and their lifecycle characteristics. Students benefit from the vast range of capabilities that make DASO Systems technology the preferred innovation infrastructure for numerous industry champions worldwide. I interrupted here because I see uh, my time is over. Anyway, the conclusion is was not that over. <laughs> if you want to learn more about this, about this notion of how, how the same infrastructure that is used to solve problems in industry 
can be used to do project-based learning or problem-based learning in your context. If you want to explore that, you have two solutions in this conference. One is to pass by our booth downstairs. We have plenty of documents, uh, including describing these things waiting for you. And the second one would be to address one of my colleagues. They are just sitting in front of me. Uh, Jean-Philippe, Florent, and uh, a newcomer in our universe, Al Bonchart, where is Al? Al is a senior VP, uh, global affair for North America, and he will be taking care now also of our academic relation. This is, a, you should take it as a very positive sign of a company who wants to intensify their interaction with your community. So um, that does not prevent me to hope that I will be with you for a 12th time next year. Thank you very much.